Welcome back, everybody. Jerome Aldonado, and it's Wednesday's Real Talk on Real Estate. And today, we're going to be talking about lumber prices are changing the housing market, or is it vice versa? So one of the big things that I want to talk to you guys about is lumber prices, building, real estate investment, high interest rates, and all of the above, how it's being influenced right now, and how lumber in itself, right? This has been the big topic in past months. And over the last two years, really, because we were getting plummeted with lumber prices, builders were just taking it and uh, taking it out of their bank accounts. And they were just getting hosed financially by the lumber market. And they were blaming it on the forbearances in Canada. And what really drives the lumber prices? Supply and demand. And so at the end of this video, I want to explain to you guys two methods that you can utilize before we end this video that right now that other people are utilizing and actually making a big difference on how home buying is being done in spite of high interest rates, okay? So stay tuned towards the end of this video and I'll explain to you guys two different means that most buyers are utilizing right now that we're seeing over a decade ago that hasn't been prevalent and now a decade later is high. So. Let's talk about these lumber prices. Let's talk about what's happening uh, with lumber prices and how it's driving the housing market right now. And one of the big things is lumber is sold in 1,000 um, board feet, right? So every 1,000 feet, that's the price of lumber. And so when we were at its highest in board feet just six months ago, so when we were looking back early summer, like J June of 2022, yes, ladies and gentlemen, this year per board foot, we were looking at prices right around $1,400 per board foot back in June. Now, this month, we saw board, uh, the price per 1,000 board feet go down as low as $382. Those are 2013 numbers. So when I talk about the benefits of, of building right now in spite of interest rates, you have to look at the market for where it stands and the benefits of what we are getting graceful, uh, gracefully in spite of what's happening with high interest rates and inflation and all, the, all this negative stuff that the media is pounding you guys with. And so when we look at this, I was just looking at driving back to 2019 numbers where lumber prices were high. Well, I'll tell you, 2013, a lumber package for a 2,500 square foot house was costing us someplace in the neighborhood of low $20,000 mark. OK, now that drove is high with trusses and all of lumber that drove as high as eighty two thousand dollars for us personally. Now, we just did the uh, a real similar home, changed and modify the floor plan a little bit. Same square footage within 20 square feet of each other. That exact same lumber package we just purchased two months ago. Versus the one we purchased this summer cost us. $53,000, $82,000 in June. Now that same exact lumber package is costing us in the high $30,000 mark. So extremely, extremely grateful as far as um, where the lumber prices have gone because they've almost went down almost two thirds. Uh, not quite there, but they've definitely dropped in half and more. In fact, they are down 64% year to date right now. And so we're seeing lumber prices go down. Now, the, what's, what's driving this? OK, well, high interest rates are driving this um, because what's happening with high interest rates right now, a 30 year fixed mortgage is costing people about six point five percent on average. Now, that that's lower than what we were at our high at about seven percent just a month or so ago. So at six point five percent, according to Freddie Mac, we're actually slightly lower than um, we were just about 30 to 60 days ago, um, but still double where we were at the beginning of this year. So when we talk about interest rates and we talk about how it's affecting and bearing on the market, we're looking at double the interest rates than we were just 12 months ago, ladies and gentlemen. So that's bearing down on the housing market. So home builders confidence is dropping. Now, let me give you guys some insight on this really quick because I'm a home builder, right? I've been, I started off building homes in 1999, dinosaur ages ago. Okay. Now, if you guys like this content, ladies and gentlemen, you guys want to find out exactly how builders should be building their homes and how most of them aren't and why builders confidence has went down, then click that thumbs up button, give us some love and pound that subscribe button on our YouTube channel to get notifications of content just like this. Okay. Now, one of the big things 
is that builders should have already been building like this. Um, for those of you guys who follow our content and understand that our primary business model surrounds around buying land and building houses, one of the big things, we make six-figure profits, but our business model is built for times like this, okay? Now, I'll tell you guys, I'll be the first to tell you that we were making over $200,000 profits on every single build in the height of this market. Now, that's an unprecedented business plan, okay? We don't do that. Now, when we build in... In, um, in markets like Seattle and California, Southern California, Northern California, places like that will bear profits larger than that. But in most average markets, which constitutes for about 95% of the continental United States, six figures is what we typically bank on on every market that we're in because that's been our average even through the, the 2008 financial crisis when Lehman Brothers collapsed and it was the largest financial crisis that we have ever had in the United States. And so we built this, this business model around that going, okay, that worked during 2008. In fact, it saved our, our tails. But the problem with most builders is when things get really good, they try to give clients as little as possible for their buck. And so when they do this, the quality drops because they can sell almost anything because it's a seller's market and buyers are willing to buy because they have no options. But here's what happens in that market. When the market contracts and builders start slicing and dicing to increase profits, when they should be given quality, it lands up hindering their business model down the road. So their builder's confidence goes down because now their profitability goes down. There's a lot of waste. Okay. And so they're, and they're building on volume. So most of the volume that's being built is for the average median buyer, which sits with people buying under the $380,000 price point on homes. So when you think about the average buyer, okay, our, our U.S. median home buyer, that constitutes for 71% of our home buyers, okay? So 71% of people that are buying homes are buying homes under, under the $380,000 mark, okay? Now, what we always tell people is there is, there is a target point to our market, and there I call it the sweet spot. So those of you guys who are sitting back right now going, hey, I have reservations of whether I should be building homes. Well, I'll tell you right now, ladies and gentlemen, that this is the time because we're going to slowly, as we move through 2023, what's going to land up happening is interest rates are going to slightly go up a little bit more. The feds have already documented that. So lumber prices and commodities, building commodities are going to continue to tumble. Okay. Building com commodities over the last three months, ladies and gentlemen, have already tumbled 9%. OK, so we're not just talking about lumber. We're also talking about all building commodities. OK, so crude oil, that's PVC pipe, plumbing material, heating and cooling material. All of that stuff has started to soften. OK, so we're seeing this. And so as this happens, the cost to build goes down. But even though that housing prices start dropping, if your cost to build goes down, Things have went up so much that appreciation has went up so much there. The, 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 the volume, ladies and gentlemen, even if it dropped 11 percent, which is what they're projecting for this next year. It helps drive prices down on the building commodities. Now, here's what lands up happening. OK, so pricing commodities start to drop down. OK, so the price to build goes down. We drop 11 percent. Even if the worst case scenario, we drop 11 percent. We were still up over 28 percent of where we were in 2019, which means, ladies and gentlemen, that we are still up by 17 percent of where we were 2018 numbers. I mean, 2018 and 19 numbers. So if the cost of building goes back down to 2013, 14, 15, 16, 17 or 18 numbers, our cost to build is still being driven substantially further down than what it was. So what I've been telling people is embrace the high interest rates because at the end of this video, I'm going to explain to you guys two ways that home buyers, the two home buyers, actually three, but I'm going to give you two ways that most home buyers are buying right now to leverage real estate. So stay tuned for that because I want to share with you guys a little bit more insight on this stuff. Okay, uh, let's give you guys a little bit more data how this works. And I want to give you guys a little bit more insight on the business model. What builders should have been doing is giving quality since the very beginning. OK, so I always tell people I advocate for quality because quality always sells. So when you go into a compromised market, your home sell, because think about what people are looking for. OK, think about yourself. Now, one of the biggest things that I think is a lot that's been a lost commodity in our society has been customer service. So we've lost customer service. OK, that's one thing home builders should be focusing on right now is customer service. The second thing is 
home buyer's quality, which also runs in parallel with customer service, right? You sell somebody a quality product and you give them more for their money right now, and you should be doing it always, whose product is going to sell first, yours or the competition's who has cut corners and quality. Your house is going to sell before theirs. Okay. So it's always about quality, indefinitely about quality and customer service. Those two things run parallel with each other, especially right now in a market that we're living in today. Okay. Now, October's uh, home sales fell by 6% month over month and um, nine months straight decline in home sales right now. We just built some homes. They sold in less than 30 days and they only sold for, we expected them to sell for 10% less when the market was bearing. They sold for a 3% variance from the height of the market. And it's because when people walk in our homes, they go, wow, I haven't seen anything of this quality on the market. Now, one of the things that we do when we sell our homes is we get a home buyer's inspection company for $400 to come in and inspect the house before. And they go through the entire home. We pay for it. We give the inspection to the home buyer and we say, is there anything in addition that you guys want to look for? And then we go back to our subcontractors. We make them hit every single punch list item on that inspection before the home buyers even move in. And then when they move in, we get almost we get almost none, maybe like one or two small things once people move into the house, but almost zero callbacks on the homes. And it's the quality. And people can't even believe. They're like, oh, my God, this is one of the best homes I've ever purchased in my entire life because our demographics. Now, we talked about the 71% of home buyers being the median home buyers. But what I like to talk to you guys about is those are not the people that are buying homes right now. OK, they're buying homes, just not in volume. So that demographic is the number one demographic that gets hit the hardest during a downturn market. So what's driving lumber prices to come down right now is the fact that that market sector has declined. OK, so because that market sector has fallen by six percent month over month and nine straight months straight, what market sector should you be selling to the middle class? that are more the affluent middle class. The upper middle class, the people that are making six figure incomes, not the wealthy, not the poor, not the median, because the home buyer that you want to be selling to right now, investors, listen up. The 24% of home buyers that function just over the median, people that are buying homes over 400,000 and under a million dollars, under 800,000, really, but definitely under a million. And if you stay between that sector right there, that's gold, ladies and gentlemen. That is the demographics that has capital, 24%, which still constitutes for over 100 million home buyers across the continental United States, which is a large amount of people. So understand that that is the demographic that's buying right now. They're not the ones that are constituting for the drive of lumber prices going down, but, but thank God the median is because now it allows us to buy the exact same product and build for substantially less. So if we take a lumber package that we once paid $80,000 for this past summer, and now we're paying $40,000 for it, 64% less, really in the $30,000 range, we get to get that towards our bottom line. So just take, for example, that if housing prices, if a house that was sell once selling for $700,000 dropped in $40,000 in value, guess where that came from? You're still making the same profit because now your lumber prices are $40,000 less than it was this summer. And so the cost and expense of buying that lumber at its high of the market, in spite of the high prices that you could pay for real estate, you just take that right off your bottom line on the commodity decrease that we're seeing right now nationwide across the country. Okay. So super cool. Now, uh, home buyers confidence right now is at the lowest that it's been in over a decade. It, that's driving lumber prices low. Now, I promised you guys something here, and then I'm going to open it up for a little bit of Q&A for a few minutes. I see a few people here have two questions for Jerome Anthony. I'll answer your question here in just a minute. Hang on tight. Um, Charlie Brown, welcome, my friend. Daniel, welcome. And all the rest of you guys, I'll, I'll open it up for a few questions here for about five, 10 minutes after I'm done. But ladies and gentlemen, I promised you guys, who are the demographics of people that are buying? We know it's a 24%. Now. Who's still the more affluent home buyers? Cash buyers, ladies and gentlemen. They're the ones buying homes right now. Home cash home cash sales has went up to an all-time high since 2014. Okay. So we haven't seen this many uh, cash buyers since 2014. Why would you buy cash 
when money is almost free. When interest rates were down at um, under 3%, just use the bank's money because you get a 2% tax write-off on your on your federal income taxes being a home buyer and the depreciation of your home in and itself is going to diminish your interest rate down to zero. So when interest rates were really low, use the bank's money. It's stupid not to because after you um, take your tax write off depreciation on your home, and then you go in and you take the low two, 3% interest rates that we were getting, it made sense to use the bank's money. But now that interest rates have gone up, most of our home buyers and demographics in that 24%, I would say at least 40% of our home buyers in prior years have been people that have retired from more affluent areas of the country and moved to the beautiful Southwest and bought cash taking the rest of their nest egg out of their investments from their homes they sold in California, New York, Florida, Pennsylvania. And then they retire with several hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not more, in their bank account. Plus, they own their house free and clear of any encumbrances, including loans. OK, so that's first and foremost. Now, number two, the one thing that we've seen more of and you guys are going to want to know this is FHA loans, they're starting to appear again. They weren't popular. They lost their popularity. We haven't seen FHA loans um, climbing in the market since um, since prior years. And now, post-recession, for the first time in of over a decade, we're starting to see FHA loans surface again because it's a great place for home buyers is the federally, federally assisted loans. OK, so those two sectors right there are really what's stabilizing the market in the uh, home buyer sectors right now that are trending in those two areas. Those are the two sectors that you should be encouraging your set, your your home buyers to go seek after. And if you are an end buyer, those are two sectors you should consider either cash purchase or FHA loans. Now, let's see here. We have I'm looking to buy a 2000 uh, 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 buy a 200 K lot on one acre million dollar neighborhood for my personal home. Okay. Um, cool, Daniel. Um, I'm assuming million dollar home, 200K. My suggestion to you right now, uh, more so than ever, is not to pay retail for land. Um, people understand that the first place your discounts are going to start in real estate right now is in the land. So one of the places where we're leveraging our largest discounts right now is in the land. Um, and so that's a, another great point, Daniel, is that in spite of lumber prices going down because of the market, supply and demand, is you want to be able to make sure you're not you're, when you start in this process of building in building right now, you should look at 2019 numbers. That's my biggest advice to you guys. Whatever you were paying for land in 2019 is the price you should be paying today or less. OK, now I'm going to ride the I'm going to ride the coattail of the of the media as much as I can when I'm buying. I'm going to go cry broke as much as I can when I uh, and I'm going to write that coattail as far, all the way to the bank when it comes to me negotiating a better price on my land in this current market. So I will tell you that two hundred thousand dollars is you're paying the height of the market prices for a million dollar home. So if that house sells for a million dollars when I was building in in uh, uh, up in Kirtland, which we still are. Our max price was two twenty five for a one point four million dollar home, and we are profiting over three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Really, we're profiting just under a half a million dollars per unit on those homes, and we still have four to put up. But I'll tell you that now, now, right now, per lot, we will never pay over one hundred eighty thousand dollars. So I think you're overpaying by twenty thousand dollars for that land at minimum, and I would say even more than that. I would leverage that land for less money and a discount right now and write the coattail of the media all the way to the bank. As far as you going and going, cry broke, say the market's crumbling, the world's caving in on us. I cannot pay retail for this land. I have to get it at this price indefinitely. And then write it all, write that coattail all the way to the bank and get that discount on that land, plus all the discounts and commodities. That way, if your price per uh, your price per home has to go down slightly, your profit doesn't. And your equity standpoint, if it's your end, end, if you're the end buyer, doesn't go down either. Okay, Anthony asks, um, is Todd Alt open to financing um, your mentees for the right project? Yeah, he's always said that, and he will. And we have affiliates coming out of our yin yang now. We have a, we have finance affiliates that are coming, that are coming to us looking for your guys's uh, projects that are financing them. We have over 400 members in our buy land build house project and we have over 100 homes being built right now um, of people that we're mentoring right now and um, it's cool some of them have been coming in working with us on our sales team 
um, internally with our company and they're building houses on the side. Um, so it's super cool. And yeah, we have tons of affiliates, including Todd Alt, which is one of my great close friends, um, dear, dear to my heart. And um, yeah, he will. If, if I underwrite them, I look at them and, and they pencil and pass the sniff taste for sniff test for profitability. Todd will uh, look at those. Um, he's said it from stage and he said it on videos and he will he will live up to that. Also, with regards to the single to your single family builds, do you build a minimum number of uh, of this point in your career? Do you build a minimum number at this point in your career? Thank you. Um, so I think you're asked. I, I'm not sure exactly the second question is, but I'm saying, has there been a minimum that I've built um, per year? I think at this point in time, I've built hundreds of homes. I think we're probably just shy of 500 homes that I've built in my career, single family residential homes. Um, I'm not a single family home developer as much anymore because we've scaled to big multifamily. That's what our build wealth is, passive income. Um, when I build a house and I sell it, it's a great active income and it's large profits in it. But I'm getting old, guys. I'm, I'm, I turned 50 in just, uh, in, you know, in just a, a little over a year from now. And um, I'm moving, you know, I've been doing this for almost three decades. And so now we've graduated into passive income. Okay. And so all of our stuff now is we're buying land. We're building big, massive institutional apartment complexes. That's what we do. And I still build a few homes a year to, cause my wife kicks me out of the house. She doesn't want me at the house. I can build those apartment complexes for my living room. And she's like, you're still home. Get the hell out of here already. You're driving us crazy. So, um, so I go build a couple homes to keep myself busy and get my, get out of my wife's hair. Um, so like this year, we only built, uh, we only built two homes locally and, um, and my business partner up in the uh, Pacific Northwest, um, we built um, half a dozen homes up there and a few down in Desert Hot Springs. So um, just doing a few homes and they're great profitability. They're great. We'll continue doing a few homes here and there. I want my kids to do them um, because I know that if they do two homes a year, they will live an incredible lifestyle first and foremost, in spite of whatever else they do. They can go be school teachers and make a stupid sixty, seventy thousand dollars dollars $80,000 a year. And then they build a, a a house, two houses, and then they make 150 per house. They make 300 grand off the houses and 80 grand off that. They're living a great lifestyle. Okay. And they'll get into the apartment builds. So um, same process that I teach my children is the one I teach you guys. I tell you guys, and I talk to you guys about, and I tell my kids, pay attention. Now my son's whole entire football team, they told him the other day, go, I don't even think your dad's a real person. You know, um, we see him on T on uh, YouTube, right? Um, but I'm a real person. I bleed and poke and stuff the exact same way as everybody else. And, um, and they come, some of the boys come over and stay at our house with my son. And um, we I talk to him about real estate, teamwork, and a lot of other stuff, right? Boring dad stuff, but I'm just dad. Um, but anyways, nonetheless, ladies and gentlemen, lumber prices have driven down 64% in just year, one year. And I'll tell you, with commodities dropping by 9%, in spite of housing prices going down, I'll tell you guys that if you can get your land, under our mentorship at the right price, discounted, discounted. I'll tell you guys that there's still huge profitability in buying land and building houses. Let the volume buildings take the hit on the decline of, of home building confidence. Let them, because they're building on volume, guys. They're only making ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 per house because they're building thousands and thousands and thousands of homes. All you need to do is build two or three a year, make a six-figure profit, and you win. And you win. Ladies and gentlemen, 2000. Um, eight post to be an incredibly challenging time for us. We learned a lot. We uh, were able to skip through it. And uh, here we sit and we're still making profits. And so nonetheless, ladies and gentlemen, today was our real talk on real estate. Again, if you guys like this content, smash that thumbs up button, give us some love and pound and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more content just like this. And don't forget to catch our live on YouTube. I'm going to be talking, um, not on YouTube, on Facebook. I'm going to be talking a lot about uh, not New Year's resolutions. I don't do your New Year's resolutions, and I don't believe any of you guys should either. I think you guys need to be hyper-focused on being intentional about what you're doing. And I'm going to talk about that live, so follow us on Facebook, and I look forward to seeing you guys a little later. You guys go out there and compound your success, make it a great year. God bless you guys, and I look forward to sailing with you guys into 2023. God bless you. Good night.